Yeah, so I was saying it's important that we do all the topics before we open. Yeah, because calculus is not something, it's not a topic that you just start from without. You need to have at least foundations of different topics yeah, so that if they tell you to integrate or if they tell you to apply a certain principle when integrating or differentiating, it will be, uh, it, it, it won't be difficult for you to, to ask us to solve the question. Yeah, so that's why I'm trying to make sure that we go through all these topics. And I told you that before we start, we we'll also have to go through uh, trigonometry, meaning we we'll have at least a class, if not two, for trig. I'll revise with you the whole topic of trigonometry so that trigonometry and partial fractions yeah, so that when you start calculus, it won't be a problem um, answering such questions, trig and um, questions involving um, uh, what's this? partial fractions. All right, so let's quickly begin to solve this. So this question is also a parabola, but since in this case, the, the, what's this, the variable which is squared is x, so we expect our curve to either face up or down. So since here there's no need of us to start completing the square of this equation, you just, um, it's already in the standard form. So you just simply have to find the value of P. Or you can first start by finding the vertex, which is the turning point. So the vertex, when you get, when you equate X, plus one to zero, you find the value of X to be negative one. Then equate um, Y minus three to zero. You find the value of Y to be positive three. So now the vertex becomes uh, negative one comma three. So after finding the vertex, you need to find the value of P. And then from there, you can now uh, find the directrix and the, can find the directrix and the focus. Then you later on find the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry. So um, to find the value of P, you simply just have to equate this to 4P. So we say 4P is equal to two. So now the value of P becomes, when you divide everything by four, you have two over four, which gives you one over two. So this is the value of P. So the value of P is, uh, one over two. So one over two is greater than zero. So if P is greater than zero, we expect, uh, if P is greater than zero, this means that P is uh, positive. And when P is positive, we expect our curve to face the positive side of the Y axis or the positive uh, side, yes, of the Y axis, or it will face up. All right. So. Let's quickly um, do a simple sketch. So we expect the curve to face up. So I'm going to draw the x y plane. And then I'll lo I'll locate my turning point, which is negative one comma four. So negative one, or rather negative one comma three. One two three. So three is there. So we have negative one comma three there. And then we said it's going to face up. So we simply have to draw something like this. So after finding that, so this is my negative one comma three. This is my vertex, negative one comma three. So we need to find the, the directrix and the focus. So now to find the focus, I know that the focus is always inside uh, the oasis, the, the cave. So it's somewhere here. So now if it's there, how do I find it? I know that since the cave is facing up, since the cave is facing up, I know for me to find a coordinate which is inside, I have to add the value of P to the what? To the Y coordinate because it's face, it's directed along the y axis. So I'm going to add the value of P to the y uh, coordinate. So if I add three plus half, 
I'm going to get 3.5, which is three and a half. So I'll just say my, my, my focus is there. So my focus is there and the coordinates of the focus are uh, 3.5 or three and a half comma what? Or if you don't want to write a mixed fraction, you can write an improper fraction. So three and a half is uh, seven over two. So you write seven over two there. Then you say comma. Um, oh, sorry, not seven over two comma. I'm going to write well, in the Y. So in the Y, the value of X does not change. So we still maintain negative one. Then we say comma seven over um, two. Then to find the directrix there, you subtract the value of P uh, from the Y coordinate. So when you subtract three minus half, you get two and a half, which is just the same as 2.5. Or if you want, you can say five over two. Five over two. So this is what you're going to get. So five over two is simply just somewhere there in between three and two. So we expect our directrix to be somewhere there. Let me just write it using a different color. So we expect our directrix to be between three and two. So it's going to be somewhere there. So this is a line and I'm supposed to draw it with dotted, look at how I've drawn it. It's a line, okay. So I'm supposed to draw it with dotted uh, lines or you can draw it in a board line, there's no problem. So that is my directrix. So the line of the directrix is simply just um, y is equal to, um, five over two, five over two. And then this, these are the coordinates of the focus. And then you also need to find the line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry is a line that divides the cave into two equal parts. And this, since it's facing up, you just get the X coordinate. So you say X is equal to negative one. That's a line of symmetry. Do we have any questions? If you want, you can go on to find this coordinate there, where it cuts the axis. So do we have any questions? Okay, so we move on. We move on. All right, so someone is saying, uh, happy birthday, sir. Teaching on your birthday proves your passion and dedication to your work. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, for wishing me a happy birthday. Okay, so let's continue. Yeah, so we have um, managed to find the solution for this question there. So let's continue and look at another example, which is which I believe is the last example before we start looking at the hyperbolas. Okay, so this example is y minus two squared, and this is equal to four, uh, rather eight, uh, x minus one. So the first thing, since this is already in its um, um, general form, format, so you just have to now determine whether it's facing up or down, because we know that y is squared and we expect it to either face up or down. And how do you determine whether it's facing up or down? You simply just check the value of p. And how do you find p? You equate this eight, which is there, you equate eight, to what? To 4p. And then you find the value of p. So when you divide, let me do this, 4p is equal to 8. Then when you divide 4 on both sides there, find the value of p to be equal to 2. And 2 is greater than what? Is greater than 0. So you expect this to face where? You expect this to face on the... Sorry, I think I made a mistake when I just started explaining. When y is squared, then you expect it to either face this side or this other side. When x is squared, you expect it to face up or downwards. Okay, so since um, p is positive and the value of y is the one that is squared, meaning we expect our curve to come out like that. It has to face towards the positive because the value of p is positive, it's greater than zero. 
Okay. So after doing this, after finding out that, the next thing that you do is to find the vertex. Okay, so there's a person who is asking that, why are we using 4P? I'm sure you have just joined us. If you are there in the first meeting, you will know the reason why. So the general formula of a parabola is why a parabola which is directed along the x-axis um, is y uh, minus k squared is equal to 4p open brackets x minus h. So this is the general formula. So whatever that you have here is what you equate uh, to what you have in the given question there. So there we have eight and you are supposed to equate it to four P to find the value of P and then you make P the subject of the formula. So that's the reason why we're using four P. So if it's um, a parabola directed in the, uh, I mean, along the Y axis, uh, the general formula is X minus H uh, squared is equal to 4p, then y minus k. So in the same way, to find p, you have to equate this to what you have been given there in the equation. Okay, so once you do this, you now have to find the value of, uh, I mean, you have to find the focus and the directrix. And how do you do that? Remember what I told you? You first have to sketch. But before you sketch, make sure that you locate the turning point. And then the turning point is found by equating what you have in brackets there. So we have y minus two, you equate this to zero. And then you also have x minus one, you also equate it to zero. So y minus two to zero, when you equate it to zero, you take negative two to the other side of the equal sign, you have y is equal to two. Then when you take negative one to the other side of the equal sign, you have x is equal to what? One. So our vertex or the turning point is simply just um, one comma two. So one comma two is the vertex. Oh, sorry. I think certain things have just disappeared here. Okay. So y minus um, two is, so we have y is equal to two. So one comma two is the vertex or the turning point. So now we have, we can sketch this. Okay, so the vertex is one comma two. So we have one comma two. So this is our vertex. Then to find, um, to find the directrix and the, and the oasis and, um, the directrix and the focus, I said you first have to do a sketch. When you do the sketch, we said, since the value of P is positive, you expect our curve to face towards the positive X axis. So our curve will face this side. And then to find the focus, we know that the focus is always inside the curve. So meaning to find the focus, we're going to add the value of P to the X coordinate. So when you add, one plus two, you get three. So we have two, three somewhere there. So our focus will be there, which is going to be um, uh, three comma uh, two, three comma two. Then to find the directrix, you have to subtract the value of P from uh, the X coordinate. So when you subtract one minus, um, two there, one minus two, this is going to give you negative one. So the X, the X coordinate of the directrix or the line, um, the line of the directrix is simply just negative one. So we have our negative one there. So you have that point should be somewhere there. So this is where I'm going to draw a straight line like this. So this is my directrix, mostly, or if you want to be, if you want it to be a bit different from this line, I guess you've not put arrows, at least you draw it in the dotted way, in the dotted format. Okay, 
So this is x is equal to negative one. That's the directory. Yeah, so these are some of the things that you need to do when you've been asked to describe a parabola. So sometimes you just be given equations without being told whether it's a parabola, it's a hyperbola, it's an ellipse or a circle. What you, ne what you need to do is to master the general form formats of uh, these equations. Yeah, so when you know the general formats, once you complete the square, you it, it will reach you at a point where you have to determine whether it's a circle, parabola, ellipse, or hyperbola. Yeah. All right, so Cecilia, I have a question. Unmute yourself, please. Yes, sir. So here, uh, so it's like this. When there was this this parabola, I mean, it's uh, it's that like there was this the positives. We add to the what's this? We add p, the focus. Yes. Yes, we add, we add the value of x. Uh huh. We add then when it's um, at the negative what's this part we subtract when it's, for the focus when it's facing this side. Yes, it's yes. because you have this point there. For you to find the point which is there, it means that you are going that you're going back this side. And every time you're going back, you're going towards the negative. It means that you're subtracting from the point which is this. When you are going towards the positive, it means that you are adding to the point which which is here. That's what you okay, mean. sir. All right. Okay, so I think this was the last question on the parabolas. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to end the meeting. And then I want you to join so that we start hyperbolas. Yeah, because I want the, the was just a video for hyperbolas to be independent. Okay, so I'm going to cut the meeting, but immediately I cut, make sure that you start joining so that um, we can begin hyperbolas in the next session.